One day, I was scrolling through the list of anime made by Production IG, the studio behind amazing sports anime such as Welcome to the Ballroom, Haikyuu, and Krakow's Basketball on Analyst a few months ago, and suddenly, I came across this anime, Run With The Wind. I looked at the picture and thought, is that Kageyama from Haikyuu? I clicked on it and saw that it was a sports anime about running, and as for me, I'm a pretty big sports anime fan myself. Get kind of. Looking at the scores, it seemed promising, so I gave it a shot, and as I watched it, I fell in love with this anime. The story, characters, soundtrack, pretty much everything about it. I even put it in my number 3 for my top 8 favorite anime of all time. If you're an old subscriber of mine, you might actually recognize that I used this anime for a video on running out of orbs in a nutshell. Anyways, the point of this video is to talk about why Run With The Wind is one of the most underrated anime of 2018. Two reasons why I think this anime is so underappreciated as well. For one, it barely got advertised at all. Run With The Wind heavily got overshadowed by other great shows, like that time I got reincarnated as a slime, Bunny Girl Senpai, Jojo Golden Wind, and so many more big shows that are popular among the community. Now let's not also forget about that newest season of Pingu too. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't even know this anime existed until I was scrolling up that one day. The other reason is that it's a sports anime about, you know, running. It may turn off people due to its genre and how running seemingly can't be interesting as an anime. I don't blame them for that. I honestly had no clue how running in an anime would be interesting at all, but that changed once I watched it from start to finish. So here's a bonus for y'all before I start explaining why Run With The Wind is interesting. This might sound random, but I started watching another anime recently, Love Live School Idol Project. After finishing the first season of it, I came down to the conclusion that Love Live is basically the parallel universe of Run With The Wind. Wait, Love Live? Yes, I'm serious when I say this. Although each story differs vastly, they both have characters that are very similar in certain ways. I even did a comparison chart right here. You can just uh, skip to this time slot if you don't want an explanation on the similarities. But if you don't want to skip and want to watch, well, have fun getting mind blown as I explain why each character are similar with each other. <laughs> First, there's Kakadu and Maki. They're both the talented ones, with Kakadu being good at running and with Maki being good at singing and composing. They're both also the tsundere and moody type ones of the group, so it does take a while for them to open up to the others, and personally, these two are my favorite out of the bunch. Then we have a ragtag leaders, Haiji and Honoka. Each show probably would have never been the same if it weren't for these two. They have dreams of their own. Haiji wants to compete in the Hakune Ekiden, which is a premier team event in Japan that takes place in the mountains, and he has his other roommates join him in their track and field team. Honoka wants to save her school from closing down by starting a school idol club to save her school, and invites her friends and other students to join her. Next up is Shindo and Katori, the happy and cheerful bundles of joy that decided to join Haiji or Honoka on their own free will, because of how they thought it would be fun to try things they haven't experienced before, and also help support the team, like with clothing advice. Then there's Yuki and Umi. Aside from having a blue color scheme, these two are kinda like the idea makers of each group, with Yuki making tactics for running, and Umi making dance moves for the team. They were pretty reluctant at first to join running or being a school idol, but with enough persistence from Haiji and Honoka, they both ended up doing the hobby anyways. Then we pretty much have the lovable ones, Prince and Hanayo. Prince is a big fan of anything anime slash manga related, and Hanayo is a big fan of school idol stuff. They both also undergo a certain change after joining the hobby, with Prince tying his hair back up and reading a book in front of him to run better, and with Hanayo taking off her glasses and replacing them with contacts after joining the school idol club. And I won't forget to mention that Prince actually makes an obligatory Jojo reference in this anime too. Next is Musa and Rin. These two were inspired by others to join, with Musa being inspired by Shindo or possibly everyone else, and with Rin kinda being inspired by Hanayo. 
and in my opinion, I wish these two had more screen time because they had the least amount of character development in each show. But that's just my opinion. Then, we move on to probably the biggest coincidence by far. Nico and Nico. Well, for the runner Nico, it's his nickname. Since he smokes a lot and the other roommates dubbed him Nico-chan, which is short for nicotine. And for the idol Nico, well, it's her actual name. Not only do they have name similarities, they're also upperclassmen of the other group members, and they both have a similar backstory too. Nikuchan used to be in a track and field team, but had to quit under a circumstance. Nico experiences the same thing too. She used to be a school idol, but under a circumstance, she also had to quit. And they both miss what they love doing the most and want to do it again. I really can't unsee how these two shows are parallel universes at this point. Then there's King and Nozomi. These two are actually the only ones I couldn't really find a real distinct comparison in. Aside from both being upperclassmen and how they both have their own weird quirks to stand out more from the others. With King being the self-proclaimed king of trivia and with Nozomi and her tarot cards. Maybe that's why I compared them. They're unique in their own way. Lastly, we have the twins, Jota and Joji, and Ellie. All three used to be in a hobby that can benefit with the current one that they're doing right now. Jota and Joji used to be in a soccer club, and you have to run a lot of that. That definitely helps with running. Ellie used to be a ballet dancer, so she would know the pressure and fundamentals of dancing for being a school idol. And those are my reasonings why Love Live, School Idol Project, and Run With The Wind are both parallel universes with each other. In a joking manner. I know most of you watching are here for my fake content, but honestly, it blows my mind that this anime doesn't get enough recognition, and this is something that I had to do personally. This video will contain slight spoilers as I said in the beginning of the video, but I'll only be reviewing from episodes 1 through 11, which I think is a good stopping point since it only has 23 episodes total. So this is your last warning on spoilers. Okay, are we good? Alright. Aside from the obvious reasons such as it being animated from production IG, Run With The Wind has an engaging story that is full of heart. Unlike other sports anime, Run With The Wind takes place in a college instead of a high school. So yes, they do not have that one homework episode. As a sports anime, it doesn't actually focus too much on the sport but rather the characters instead. This anime's focus is the character development that shows the troubles, hardships, and eventually the rewards that acceptance, close ties, and goals that life will throw at you. I just love how this show can portray realism really well and how relatable these characters can be. It was really hard for me to believe that this was a fictional story, despite how human the characters felt. Nine of the main characters all live in the same dorm, as regular college students attending Kansai University with their own goals and aspirations. One day, a resident from the dorm named Haiji stumbles upon Kakuru who robbed a local store, but when Haiji sees the way Kakuru is running, he sees the potential of a dream, a dream that can come true. He invites Kakuru to join their dorm which has a total of 10 students now. Little do the others know that Haiji has an evil plan in the making right after Kakuru starts living with them. By signing up to live in this dorm, they have unknowingly agreed to permanently join the Kansai University's track and field team. Haiji's dream is to run in the main event called the Hakone Ekiden, which requires 10 people total to compete in. He wishes to train with the others harder than he ever did by himself, but of course, the other roommates are pretty reluctant because they didn't know what they had signed up to begin with. After all, they're all pretty much amateurs at running. Except for Kakuru and Haiji, of course, who both had past experiences in running. But as they continue to practice running, the other roommates come to realize that running is fun and that they have the potential to be good at it. Why do they realize only after starting to run? Why do we run? Maybe we run to win a competition or to lose some weight. Maybe we run out of happiness or anger. Maybe we run away from responsibilities and problems you'll face in life. Maybe we don't even have a real reason to run. You do it because you want to. It may be a way to start things you may potentially like. This anime tackles this topic really well. Each character has his own reason to run after starting to enjoy it. 
For example, as for King, he does it to run away from the disappointment of being rejected from jobs. For Musa, he runs for the enjoyment of the sport, which makes him enjoy running a lot more. And for the twins, they just want to impress girls by running and reaching the number one spot. All these unique reasons bring the ten closer and strengthen their bonds. Ultimately, you choose the reason why you run. In the end, Run With The Wind's theme is that of companionship and an opportunity for something bigger. The show also teaches you to just take a step back, see things through a different perspective after losing yourself in the heat of the moment, and once you've calmed down, get back into it again, much stronger than ever. As I said before, this is a sports anime and this is a genre not for everyone. With that being said, the animation and visuals are consistent and great, the pacing is well done, the characters are easily lovable, the soundtrack lived up to my expectations because I knew it was done by Yuki Hayashi, the one behind My Hero Academia's soundtrack and Q soundtrack, and the story was an inspirational experience with amazing character development. If you're still watching this and still haven't seen the show yet, give it a shot. I can't guarantee if you'll like it because I personally have a deep connection with the show, but what I can promise is a lighthearted story. If you really enjoyed an anime like Haikyuu, or Ping Pong the Animation, or even Love Live, you'll definitely enjoy this anime. Thank you for those that had the time to watch an unrelated Faye video, and hopefully this video inspired you to give this show a shot.